Yes. The raccoon is intended to represent a Karanaman adult that has just emerged from its pupil shuck. This fly rides flush and is an excellent choice when trout are feeding delicately at the surface. There are a number of different materials you can use to tie the raccoon. I still tie it using the following traditional materials. So let's tie the raccoon, a pattern I first feature in my our first book, Fly Patterns for Still Waters, and one I found out about through a old VHS tape called Mastering the Midge by Paul Lasha, uh, Washington-based angler. It's just a great emerger pattern uh, when trout are on chronomids or anytime they're sipping quietly in the surface film. So in the jaws of the vise, I've placed a Daiichi 1170 in this case, a number 14 dry fly hook. You could tie these from probably 12 through 18. Um, we just laid a base of uh, MFC 80 uh, black tying thread. And now we're going to tie in the tail. And the tail section of this fly actually resent, sorry, represents the shuck of an emerging coronum, the shuck and the gill. So I'm going to use a tip of a grizzly um, neck hackle. You could also use mallard or teal. Any barred uh, feather uh, works well, just to suggest the sort of um, segmentation and, and subtle barring that's present on the uh, shuck after the coronamid adult has crawled out of that pupil shuck. So we're just going to tie this in about shank length long, shiny side up. Just get, get that in place, just like that. Just tucked along the back. If it's a little long, you could pull it to length as well. So we're just going to make sure, obviously, once you trim off the excess here, that's what you're getting. So we'll just trim that off. And then we're going to come back. And being true to the original pattern, I'm going to use some white ostrich hurl. You could certainly use um, yarn gills as well, figure eight them in place like a little micro spinner wing, but... Uh, the ostrich hurl is still a wonderful material because it moves and breathes uh, under the subtlest of water influences. So we're just going to secure a single strand right at the base of the tail and we're just going to wind that around there probably about three times. So there's one wrap, two wraps, three wraps. We're going to come up Tie this off, trim away the excess, and you can see how that sort of represents the back end. There's the gills of the spent. They always stay with the shuck, and then there's the shuck itself. And then we can moisten our fingers a little bit, because like marabou, ostrich hurl thins down once it's wet. And we'll just cover all of this up. I'm going to take our tying thread. I don't know, three quarters of the way up the shank. Now the back on this, I'm going to use elk hair. You could certainly use deer hair. And if you want to really add a modern touch, you could just use a slip of tan sheet foam, which is probably the most durable of all those options. Um, but I still kind of like the elk hair. You can't beat its natural buoyancy. So what I've done is I've trimmed a, you know, half the shank length, sorry, half the gape width uh, clump and I'm going to hold it by the tips. I'm going to hold it by the tips like so, and I'm just going to come in and stroke out not only the the under fur, but any short fibers. Okay, you can see them all out of there, and we can also give a little bit of a cursory strip at the tip area. And we're going to tie this in by the tips. Uh, I'm going to trim the tips even. And by tying in by the tips, 
if there are any short fibers left when I stroke this back because that's the butt end of the materials in my fingers here I, I, I'm just whenever I work with uh, deer elk I always keep it's a very hands-on material don't want to let go of it and right back and a push right back to the base of that ostrich hurl but if I had any short fibers in there because the short fibers would have been attached because the short fibers would have been attached to the hide at the butt section they're going to pull out so when you pull this over to make the uh, shell back that this is going to be used to form um, you're not going to have little uh, ends sticking out all over the place and we're just going to cover all of this up and now you could make this out of thread but I like to put dubbing for the body and any dry fly dubbing um, uh, ice dub would work um, your your uh, dry fly blends antrons whatever this is black I probably tie black brown and sorry claret or burgundy is my most common colors and you just want to dub a very you see I'm doing a very sparse slender dubbing loop no dubbing wax I just moisten my fingers I'm essentially just making fuzzy thread and then we're just going to walk that tying thread back see how I left it bare so when I get to the base of the, the where I tied in the elk hair and the ostrich hurl finishes now I'm just going to come forward try to build a nice even body if I can put a little bit more on it's always best to dub a little and add more it's kind of tough to take the dubbing off once you've twisted it around you want to make this skinny you're imitating a coronamid for the most part it'll go again as I said in the introduction this fly has worked any time um, trout are sort of feeding at the surface it can represent you know, trout are just sort of looking for something lying flush. It's an emerger, it's a transitional fly as well. So we just get that in. We got a little strand sticking up there. Still there. Still. Pull that out of the way. And then all that's left to do, this is a simple, simple fly. Is pull, gather. Pull this over. Kind of roll it towards me a bit because the thread torque will sort of want to roll it that way and sort of write everything on top and just get tighter tighter and then tightest because fine thread if you go too aggressively can cut this pop that up almost elk hair caddis style we'll come in with our whip finisher build our head disengage trim and we're going to come in with our scissors and just trim these about even with the the um, hook eye a little stub wing like that and that's going to help too because we fish this dead drift but you can also fish this fly I believe a lot with a little bit of movement and uh, that little um, um, stub of elk hair in this case will uh, foam elk hair deer hair whatever you choose to use for the, the shell back will create help create a wake and then to add a little bit of reinforcement, I'm going to come in with a little bit of the Solaris Bone Dry. Just coat that over. You can put it on the foam. So a lot of the Solaris resins, I've been searching for years, um, actually stick and hold on foam. Other resins sometimes popped off and, and uh, didn't work, but this works well. It adds a level of durability. And then we're just going to come in. Give that a quick try, and there you have the finished raccoon. Dead simple and deadly when trout are sipping on the surface on emerging coronamid adults and transitioning pupa. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.